Virgin Galactic has been a divisive company in both spaceflight and stock trading circles. It's been promising the first manned commercial spaceflight for a while now, but its promises haven't really panned out, and the business thesis really relies on a couple of factors, factors I'm not really confident to their competitive in, especially as they face yet another setback with the recent abort of their VSS Unity. To be honest, I really don't think Virgin Galactic has what it takes to compete with companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, and ULA. Their first problem is their flight profile. It's a suborbital one, which means that it can't reach orbit like the Falcon 9 and Dragon. This means that passengers can only make it 280 kilometers. It's the edge of space defined by the US, but it's not above the Kármán line, which is the internationally agreed boundary between air and space. This low altitude also means that passengers will only spend 4 minutes in weightlessness. This, is, this means that passengers are going to be paying $250,000 to only experience about 240 seconds of weightlessness, more than $10,000 per second. Sure, the prices are exorbitant, but this isn't enough to count out Spaceship 2 as a viable business model. The real nail in the coffin in my mind for manned spaceflight on Spaceship 2 is the fact that it requires human pilots, which is a huge issue in a field where pilots have been completely phased out. Having such a fallible flight method with minimal redundancy means that the tragic loss of life that happened when the pilot unlocked the wing feathering mechanism on the original Spaceship 2 VSS Enterprise while the craft was breaking the sound barrier caused the entire craft to break up due to the stresses placed on it, killing the pilot and injuring a crew member. This single failure point is just unacceptable, and even if they fixed this one, there's still no accounting for the other ways in which pilot error might endanger the lives of passengers. We've had the capability to fly spacecraft autonomously and land them ever since the Buran, and risking pilots during the testing program for the Spaceship 2 is pretty irresponsible. It also has to be noted that there is no escape system like on Dragon, New Shepard, Orion, and Starliner. And while this doesn't mean it's not safe, it's another hurdle to a safe flight. There is some good news about Virgin Galactic's flight profile, however. The VSS Eve, or the carrier aircraft for the Spaceship 2, carries the spacecraft to 44,000 feet and then releases it and the motor, the hybrid motor on Spaceship 2, fires a couple of seconds later. Now this not only adds a lot of complexity into the startup of the Spaceship 2, but it also allows for tons of abort modes. Since you're starting in the air, the Spaceship 2, if the engine fails just as it did last weekend, it can shut off the motor using its hybrid rocket motor and just coast down to the landing strip at Spaceport America. So this allows for some semblance of abort modes, even if the engine goes through a hot fire abort. This relatively successful failure was not reflected accurately in the stock price, though. We saw an almost 17% drop in the stock price, which I think was a bit of an overreaction. And I think this partly comes out to the fact that most of the investors in Virgin Galactic don't really know too much about the aerospace side and are just investing in it because it's the new hot thing on the market. While it wasn't the space flight everyone was hoping for, last weekend's flight at least proved that Virgin Galactic does have abort modes and those abort modes do work, which is a valuable thing when you're working with a passenger spacecraft that they hope to have running multiple times a week. Now the second problem with Virgin Galactic is that their business case is rapidly fading. Their seat price is $250,000, and while that might compare favorably to seats on Dragon or Soyuz, they aren't comparable offerings. Remember, Virgin Galactic is suborbital while Soyuz and Dragon are orbital. Virgin Galactic also has another competitor in the shape of Blue Origin's New Shepard, which should compare favorably in price to Virgin Galactic especially with Bezos' propensity to undercut competitors with his deep pockets. Not to mention, New Shepard has an abort motor, can make it to 100 kilometers, and its capsule design is much more conventional than Spaceship 2. The only major failing I see 
by Blue Origin is their complete lack of initiative when it comes to developing New Shepard. They're on their 13th launch with a practically spotless record, and we still haven't seen them make any real steps towards having people fly on their rocket. And I think this is a larger problem with Blue Origin. They just haven't shown the drive that SpaceX and other companies have shown in developing their products. And with them joining the national team and providing their B4 engine to ULA, I really feel like you, uh, Blue Origin is trying to enmesh itself into the whole military rocket complex. That's just, I don't think is what should be happening to a private space company that hopes to innovate at the level I think Blue Origin can. And that was a bit of a tangent, but back to Virgin Galactic. Aside from its less than stellar history as a launch provider, the company itself has been a money sink for a long time. It's been plagued by slipping timelines and stock offerings, and Branson has been using the hype around Virgin Galactic to fund his stressed airline holdings like Virgin Atlantic. The financial picture for Virgin Galactic isn't much better though. They only made $1.8 million last year, and some quarters, they don't make any money. Compared to an annual loss in 2019 of over $210 million. Of course, most startups start in the red. But every delay for Virgin Galactic means millions of dollars lost. And with this failed flight, it just means more time and money lost. I think the only reason Virgin Galactic's stock price has done so well is that they're the only pure launch provider company that's currently public. People love buying into the future. I mean, you can see what Tesla's doing for evidence of that. And space gives them that opportunity. It's also important to note that Virgin Orbit, the air launch startup, is not a subsidiary of Virgin Galactic. Rather, it's a separate company owned by Richard Branson. I personally think that Virgin Galactic is a cool company with a great idea. I just don't think its business model is competitive anymore. I mean, the first Spaceship One flew in 2004. They've had this technology for over a decade and they just haven't been able to capitalize it yet. It's being eclipsed by more agile and efficient companies. And God forbid Starship starts carrying commercial passengers in the next 10 years. Virgin needs to play this next decade smart and make it happen in the next couple of years. But even then, if they become profitable, they're just going to be eclipsed by other companies that are just innovating much faster than they are. But for all that, watching Virgin Galactic's failed launch attempt was still pretty cool watching Spaceship 2 fall out from under the VSS Eve, and I wish Virgin Galactic the best of luck. I'm Cosplus Content, signing off.